Pumping a potion! Pumping a potion! Give it me! We did it! We did it! All we have to do is survive! Survive! Oh! Steep, mate. Talk to me. E3 announced steep. Mixed reviews. I loved it because we haven't had a good snowboarding winter sports game for ages. Yeah, and, a fun and, one. Everyone like looks at it and goes tricky, but it's not going to be tricky at all. It's going to no. be open world Ubisoft and Ubisoft all over the place and microtransactions. But graphically, it looks fantastic. You get to it do does. wingsuiting. There's no flapping in a wingsuit, mate. Skiing. And some snowboarding. Oh, no, that's how you're excited, man. Yeah, I'm going to take this one, because I, like, like I say, when I saw the trailer, I was like, that game looks really cool, and most people just went, that game looks really bad. So let's go find out <laughs> what it is, all right? Select character. Steep, mate. Yeah, when it was announced at E3, I saw the trailer come up. It was, like, instantly divisive. It did look really it, good. It looked really good, but then at the same time, I was tweeting about it, and the people went, no, no, not look good. Really? Think, yeah, because I think when people see a snowboarding game, they want SSX, or they oh. want the really new Tony Hawk's. This something isn't up, that. Yeah, something yeah, over the top they wanted. Yeah, so I got hyped because I like snowboarding games. It's been so long since we fucking had a decent yeah. one. Uh, uh, that I remember or that I've played. And the recent Tony Hawk's games have been fucking shite. <laughs> so it was looking pretty good for me. Fair enough. So now it's out. We had an open beta, which plenty of people tried out. And uh, now we got to try the official game. So okay. let's get into it. The story... No. <laughs> There's no real story <laughs> to speak of. Uh, that's not the way the game's designed to be done. But what they do have is to keep you moving throughout the mountains. There's a narrator who's going to contact you. He's going to say, hey, Billy Bob or Red Bull is going to be <laughs> GoPro, is going to be filming at some new hot air balloon or something along those lines. And they need to make an extreme sports video. You've been invited. You should go and check that out. Oh, cool. Uh, so it's not a story per se. It's just really like, hey, you've unlocked this area of the map. You should go there for this reason. Oh, there's a competition going on. You should go and try out this route. Okay, uh, so it keeps you moving, really. It keeps you moving. The big part of the game is that how open it is. It's, it's massively open. They just give you the Alps, and they just say, go at it. Just that's free range the, on it yeah, all. Yeah, that's a huge theme of the game. and It's going to be the thing that people either want to buy this game for or don't, is right. that there's nothing like levels or anything like that. They, they do have normal, medium, and hard courses, but it's more a case of... We give you this entire sandbox, this open world, with literally infinite things to do within the constraints of whether or not you want to ski, you want to snowboard, uh, parachuting or wingsuiting. Go to it. Just go and have fun. Just that go and do it. That sounds really good. <laughs> it is pretty good. It is if you're into it. If you need yeah. to be like pushed into, you need a sense of direction. Yeah, if you given like a bit you. of a linear line to travel on, this game is going to just look like a lot of the same over and over again. Right, and it's going to come down to whether or not you really like it. But the world is gorgeous. It God, it good. looks fucking good. Yeah, I had some weird issue at the very start of the game where the opening scene of gameplay dropped me to like forty FPS, and we have very powerful machines. I was like, oh shit. Is this actually going to be, like, pushing my machine for this? Uh, but uh, weirdly enough, every single thing we did after that, no problem at all. That's weird, man. Yeah, it was really weird. It was the very opening part of the game was 40 FPS for about 30, 40 seconds of this opening bit. It wasn't a cutscene or anything. It was actually in-game. But everything after that really screwed up. Uh, was perfect. Everything after that was perfect. Cool. So let's go on to the gameplay then, pal. Yeah, the, the gameplay is just freedom of movement. And this is a real big plus of this game. So it has a huge, huge, huge amount of courses that are set already. But it never takes you out of the gameplay. Ever. So okay. once you start, you actually ride into the start of the course. The course will begin. There's no, no screen that pops up with a countdown or start line or anything like that. You just go into it and it goes, right, you're doing this course now. It'll give you checkpoints and stuff for that course. And then when it finishes, it doesn't stop the game either to say what your results were or anything like that. You just, just carry on where on you screen. left off. You just carry on. You can absolutely start at the top of the mountain and have like a 10 or 15 minute ski to the bottom of the mountain. Wow. And you can do various courses along the way. So if you finish a course and you see another course coming up, you can just, you know, ski into that, take that on, do that one, finish that. It never stops, never pauses. And if you do want to travel to somewhere else in the map, the loading screens, at least on PC, and this wasn't on an SSD, were instant. It was just like, you were there, get going, oh, okay. get doing whatever the fuck you want to do. The whole point of the game is like, just go and just have fun and do things. 
And then they have this idea that they want you to do this. So there are hidden areas throughout the world, besides the ones it gives you, and it'll just say, hey, you can see maybe a cool spot nearby. Use your binoculars, you can see it, cool, now you can access this new area. Oh, so can you quick travel to that area once you find it? Yeah, you can absolutely Thank quick God travel. God for that. In my mind, I'm thinking when you said you can ski down this beautiful mountain, which is cool, and it could, it could even take a couple of minutes to get right to the bottom, is how the hell do you get back to the top? Instantaneous. Oh, so you can fast. Well, so it's kind of like once you've discovered, you can fast travel type. Yeah, mechanic. if you, as long as you, you can fast, you can immediately warp to any challenge in the game. If okay. you've unlocked a course, you have a little icon that says there's a course here. You can instantly travel to that. It will literally just straight away drop you there and you go. Cool. Or you could drop to a camp where there's camps and stuff going. There's nothing you could do there besides ski to the challenges. Yeah. Or just jump off the mountain and go. That's it. All there's right. no interaction or anything like that. It's all about the gameplay. It's all about just skiing and that's and parachuting and wingsuiting. <laughs> which are the other things you have access to at the same time. But you literally could just whiz all over the Alps instantaneously. You never spend any time goofing around. In fact, at the beginning of the game, I didn't understand that. Because it kept telling right. me to, you should try and see this new area. And I thought, oh god, we've got to try and walk there, or we've got to ski there, or something like oh, that. But no. the range on it is enormous. It was like, if you're nearby, just whip out your binoculars, which is just a key press, and there you go, you're there, and you can do it. That's pretty cool. Yeah, That's I, I spent probably a, a good 15 minutes for trying to figure out how I get to a new area <laughs> and it turned out to be just ludicrously simple yeah. really ludicrously simple but as I was saying because you can just free flow down all of the mountains if you find a route that you thought oh that was pretty cool or I just did something that was really awesome you can then create a route there for other people oh, wow. to try yeah and you can lay down a huge amount of challenges that you want to put there whether it be a time attack or a score attack what, what uh, board do you want to use? Do you want to use snowboarding? Do you want to ski here? Do you want to parachute it? Do you want to wingsuit it? You can find a cool route, and they encourage you to do this a lot, and then just claim that as your own. And then and other people, other can, people play can play it. Yeah, yeah so other cool. people log in and they go, oh, there's a new challenge here. I could try this one out. I could do So it's like kind of like GTA in terms of creating your own event for then other people to test on yep, theirs. Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely can do that. Uh, so having said all that, the skiing and the snowboarding are the primary activities. There is parachuting and there's wingsuits. But the wingsuits and the parachuting aren't long-lasting content at all. Like, wingsuiting is really cool the first time you do it. Yeah. And then it's not. And it's just... We are yeah, and no. then it's not. It looks fantastic. Don't get me wrong. This game is a cinematic, gorgeous beauty. And they yeah. really encourage replays if you did something cool. They will save your course. They will re they'll create a ghost for it. But you can also create a floating camera to watch what happened, to show other people, to link it and stuff like that if you did something okay. awesome or a cool crash. But parachuting is very, very slow. There aren't many tricks you can do. The wingsuit doesn't have any tricks at all. It's just like float down a mountain and... It's great the first time. It's really cool the first time you slip through some rocks. Yeah. And you think, that was fucking badass. <laughs> but, like, the fourth or fifth time... No, like, dies uh, off pretty yeah, quickly. Yeah, it's like, I'd rather ski, because that's where the meat of the game is. Yeah. The meat is in the With skiing and the snowboarding, which then brings you on to the tricks. Now, the trick system, I was divided on whether I liked it or not. The trick system has a ludicrously simple tutorial of about a minute and a half. Right. And it basically tells you, this right trigger is jump, mm -hmm. and then you can hold your board and you can spin it with the sticks. Off you go. That's that's it. That's it. That's all it tells you. And there's no sense of tutorial training really after that. And what you find is once you start doing the mega tricks, it's a really in-depth system that needs a huge amount of skill to land properly. But it doesn't show you this. It doesn't show you that. You're going to have to figure it out yourself. So you can, if you like had any sort of gaming experience, the first thing it tells you is like, oh, you can spin the board and you do this. The next trick you do after your basic one is like a 460, 1080 fucking free-flowing sat on fire with a firework in your ass, right? But you're not going to land them. And it doesn't really have any system in place to try and teach you how to do that properly. It's just trial and error, trial and error, trial and error. And the backlash of that is the score attacks in the trick rounds. Landing is everything. So you could do is, yeah. a fucking 1080 and get 100 points if you landed rough. Even though you landed and carried on your board... You'll get no points for it. Because it's all in the landing. It's all in the landing. So, But if you could do a very, very basic, almost like you made a mistake and did a really shit trick, in but land air. it really nice, you'll get a thousand points for it. Jesus. That's, yeah, so that's you, really weird of a scoring system. It's I get really, the, landing, the trick itself is irrelevant. Yeah, I get the landing, the landing should be a factor. It should be a strong factor, but it should not outweigh the trick. Yeah, several much. times I had what visually was a stunning trick with like a double backflip and right. got nothing for it. 
It was like 20 points. So I was like, what the fuck? And I'm still <laughs> carrying on, bro. I landed it. Uh, but it has different landings. Like you landed too fast. You landed too heavy. You dropped from a specific height. So your legs would have broken. But we're going to let you carry on. But it was all things that like in a real world would kind of make sense. But again, it kind of brings you back for... Well, I kind of wish they had it like a bit Tony Hawk's SSX style where I could do a ludicrous trick. And as long as I was kind of in the right direction, I'd be all right. Yeah. You know what I mean? And, and maybe something happens. But no, not in this one. It's like you must nail the landing. Now, I would say, though, like, like I say, I was mixed on this. When you do it correctly, it's very satisfying. Oh, I can imagine. Yeah, yeah, it's very satisfying. So I was torn up whether I just wanted to be able to do silly, stupid tricks, which you can do. You can do some mental tricks. <laughs> or do I kind of want it to be a little bit more forgiving on that? Because I landed... Yes, I did a mega trick. I would kind of like to land that a lot. But I do know that if I got better at the game and invested another few hours into it, I'd probably be nailing those tricks time You get a, time a again. more feel for the gravity and how your yeah. tricks work. We and, did yeah. I, I, we did spend an hour on stream with me just going over one jump, just mastering landings as okay. much as possible. We got there for the most part, but uh, when it gets to the harder courses, good God, it's fucking so hard. I can imagine. It's really, really hard. I can imagine I, like some of the... I mean, I'm just guessing now, like you're going down a track easier a ramp maybe it'll highlight a ramp like yep. it's an outline ramp whereas harder you've probably just got like a, a ramped rock face am i uh, guessing yeah right? what you'll find is so if we move into the different difficulties of course your easy ones are as as expected they're pretty much a straight downhill slope mm -hmm. not many things in the way once you get to medium you're going to be traveling through towns and villages and stuff like that all right cool uh, so you can go on the roofs and you can do that kind of stuff you can look and you're constantly encouraged to look for different ways it says look we'll give you checkpoints how you get there is entirely down to you. Oh. Because you'll soon discover... Uh, it's one of those things where you don't see the wood for the trees. Is Once you get better at the game, you'll notice that everything is a potential jump. Right, yeah. Everything that makes is sense. a potential route. Uh, it's just that you couldn't see it before until you got more experience with yeah. the game. Once you get to hard, though, holy crap. <laughs> holy crap. Uh, it is... It's determination, and this is where you'll either love... You'll either think, oh, this game's worth a try or not, because you're going to hit the hard stuff pretty quickly. Like okay. I say, they are really good about opening the world up to you very quickly. And so you'll hit hard, and then you'll be like, okay, this game just took a fucking big step up. And it's super difficult. I mean, you're talking about hitting a slight rock surface at the perfect way yeah. to, to actually be able to nail the jump with your legs to clear this rock face to go over the mountain. Now, if you nail it, it'll look spectacular. Cool. It might take you 45 minutes to fucking nail it. Jesus yeah, Christ. Yeah, it's tough. But the challenge is there. The challenge is there. This game is really designed for people who like... Probably single player more than anything. The multiplayer is a mixed bag. There are people around. You can send them an invite very easily just by pressing one button. I played it on the Xbox controller on the PC. And it was just press X to invite that person and they can say yeah. And then you kind of ski together. But that's about it. So it's not really depth. It's just <laughs> no, surface it's level. Like, do, you do you want to do this together? together or not? And you don't really interact or communicate in any way beyond that. Uh, some shame. people reported as well it was very hard to get with specific friends, even if they're on the Uplay system. Oh, no. Yeah, so the multiplayer is not a big part of it. It is there, but it's not really I a get thing. it'd be Yeah, but it'd be a lot more fun. Like, I remember this, if I remember rightly, it was like uh, the first um, Dark Souls. Is the it, You need that definite multiplayer connectivity to play with your friends. Because even if it's just like you're saying, no, like, but if you're wingsuiting down a cliff with three other friends... That'd look so cool, but the difficulty in getting that party just makes you think, ah, oh, fuck it then. I won't do it. Yeah, you, you just know? don't... Honestly, I was, inv I was inviting people a lot, but ultimately just didn't bother because it wasn't adding anything to the game. No. It wasn't yeah. making the game more interesting or more fun. The fun is in skiing down the stuff and get it correctly and doing that. So, so balls to all the mechanics and how glorious the game was. Forgetting <laughs> all that aside, mate, is there... And this is the big question on everyone's tongues any customization it's all customization oh. all customization uh, it, some people might see it as a positive as a negative depending on if you like that linear progression but they throw all the game at you straight away like the whole game is there it's like okay there you go off you go no uh, mate i mean for your character yeah that's what i'm equipment. saying so what they've done to include because there's no sense of progression is what i'm trying to say okay yeah, there's right, no right. like so it's there's all there's that no, like upgrading your ability to control the board or the speed or anything like that what you do have is completing courses and earning points is going to just allow you to unlock customizable outfits, gear, hats, goggles, costumes. You can be a giraffe. All these kind of things for your wingsuit. Yeah, you're just going to unlock. Up, you're going to unlock just customizable things for your character. That's it. So these customizable things like skis, snowboards, suits, parachutes. 
they don't have any sort of passive stat or anything. It's oh, no, just nothing. for it's visuals. Just visual, just cosmetic. Okay. You have a selection I'm of different riders. You can't. You don't get your own named rider. You have a selection of different riders that are like predetermined, and you flick through them to find one that you're happy with, and you can customize them individually. So some will be girls, some will be lads, different skin tones, usual shit. And uh, then you just assign to them. So I had like Tom Bjergsen and someone else, uh, you know, and then you just mo you modify those to your own set of stuff. Okay. That's about it. So that's the game. <laughs> the pros, the free flow gameplay. If you like the fact that the game just never stops you. Sandbox of a never, moment. Yeah, it never, never stops you. And you can just go from activity to activity to activity, just nonstop. You can do so much in 30 minutes. It's pretty crazy. The interesting courses are really there. They are there. The routes that are just going to be like driving you mad. Yeah. But once you get it, you'll get there. And hard, it really throws at you. And this game is fucking gorgeous. Cool. Gorgeous. Now, cons. And there are cons oh. here, guys. Ad placement is oh, so no. obnoxious. I get they're going to have a, a certain amount of ads with it being what it is. Because you're going to get the obvious... Uh, yeah, it the, makes um, sense the billboards in the snowboarding in the snow world. And stuff. You that, that. But Red Bull and GoPro are just... Everywhere. Everywhere. And your parachutes. I mean, they even don't lock a customizable parachute that has GoPro on it. And you're like, who's picking that in a video game? No. Who's picking that? That is the big it's question. It's really obnoxious. It is obnoxious. And the people who put that in there aren't asking themselves enough, who is picking that? Maybe it's well, an obligation are. from the, guy the game to developer. That is probably thinking, I feel like such a dick doing this. Yeah. But I've been told to it's part of the contract. It'll be an obligation, won't there. it? Yeah. But it's no one's going to fucking pick it. Stop being so in your face obnoxious about shit like that. I know. They could have done with some more detailed tutorials and things, I think. I think the trick system should have had some system that was like, can you nail this trick? I'd like to have known what tricks I was doing. It doesn't tell you. So you'll just get spinning and flying around. You can move your hand up and down the board to make it more complex and landing. I would like to know what they are. I like learning the names of the trees. Yeah, like like the presentation, like Tony Hawk's. It'll tell yeah, you as soon as exactly. you do it. Well, that's the next thing. I think they sh they might have benefited because they have so many different activities that you can do, but they really just boil down to either going fast or doing tricks. Right. That's it. I mean, you add the courses are what make it interesting, but the actual variation of the theme is kind of like in a death in a, an FPS game, different game modes. I think they could have benefited from having some more gamey type ones where they had half pipes and you were doing things like collect the letters. And I know it's I'm saying basically Tony Hawk's here, but I'm just saying you know gamey things like that. Yeah. That would have been more fun. I'd love to have seen grinding in the game. I was really surprised to see grinding's not there. What you mean like two people up close in a nightclub? <laughs> kind of, but sliding <laughs> along a roof or a rail. Or something yeah, like I those get lines. Yeah, I get you. Uh, maybe the, I think I think the problem is here the price tag. It's a full fledged game. It's a sixty dollar game. Oh, that's a lot no, of money no, no, for no, no. something that's not for everybody doesn't have much multiplayer and honestly yes you've got a huge open world with an endless amount of courses but you're still just skiing and snowboarding exactly uh, they could have benefited if you're going to charge that price I would probably like to have seen bobsledding I would have liked to have seen all kinds of winter activities going the, on even mini games <laughs> that you can put in that I think it needs more gamey stuff but having said that that's not the theme they were going for I get that but I think that uh, honestly was a mistake I think they could have benefited from having both sides of that. They could have maintained the theme that they want this gorgeous open world, very true yeah. to life thing, but also thrown in a fun course competition. Not only that, like that, just the two things that pop into my head is the first one is you could still do a kind of career mode in that game. Yeah. Because there's that amount of courses that are predetermined. It doesn't take much dialogue or creation to make a very simplistic but still a career which a lot of people want will want to yeah, do. Yeah, I think it could have benefited from that a lot. I, I really do think they have they've got the uh, they've nailed down like the basics. Yeah. They've got a really really good, a tremendously good skiing game. Yeah. There's not much game there beyond no. actually doing it. There's not, you know, there's yeah. loads of stuff to go and do, but all that stuff is kind of the same. Uh, I mean, it gets harder and stuff, don't get me wrong, but they could have benefited from some something that made it spice it up just that little bit. Purpose. Yeah, I mean, at a certain point, yes, your game is gorgeous, and the camera angles and replays are all funny, and yes, your ragdoll effects are really cool. It just was, where's, what's going to make me come back to this game? Do you know what else I'd like as well, mate, is a lodge. Now, let me explain what I mean. Like, obviously, we know what I'm going to talk about, skiing lodge. But, like, at the top of the mountain, maybe even a few of them. But this is where you don't... Am I assuming that when you purchase something, an item, it's just an open menu? Yeah, you just and purchase. Start to open the Right, if they had this kind of, like, lodge area where... Let's say this is where the people in multiplayer would spawn. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you've got your shops in there. That's where you'd purchase your items. But in inside there as well, you could have just random mini games, And that could span from something as small as... 
foosball with your mates because that's really simple. But even outside, like a small ice hockey rink or something yeah, like it that. It feels you like know? they're missing the stuff that makes you interact exactly. with the world itself. You don't feel too much like you're interacting with the world. Despite it's telling you you're doing these competitions and someone's going to make a video, nothing ever happens. Yeah. That. Nothing ever happens. They'll be going to be like, oh, they need you. And then the guy will tell you, oh, they used your clips in the video. Nothing ever happens to that. It's just That'd a word be so of dialogue. Cool if you got a notification like that. Yeah, and they also, I think the weird thing in the, I'm going to put this in the con section because it was just so weird. They have these stories of the mountain where you follow a literal ghost down the mountain as she recounts the story of the mountain as if she was the mountain. And it's so what? cheesy. What? Yeah, it's like, I am the mountain. No. I am the peaks and the snow. No. I am the tr and it goes on for about six minutes. That yeah, is... it's really long. Why would they even put that in there? It's very, very jarring. It's really jarring it's when it happens. It's a winter extreme sports game, but suddenly oh, it's got it's law. Sports. I wouldn't include extreme sports in there. I mean, Wingsuiting's extreme, dude. Yeah, it is, but it's not extreme in what we'd see on TV in terms oh, of Oh, not like sports. street yeah, extreme. Observer, but so. you get what I'm saying in terms of the style of the game. You wouldn't <laughs> expect that, man. I've got Wikipedia if I want to find out about the Alps. <laughs> I don't mind them having it. it, it just, optional. It, was so ja it is optional. It is optional. It's entirely optional. But when it happens compared to the rest of the game, it's like, whoa, this is weird. This just got deep. Yeah, this got really strange. And it's very cheesy. It's very, very... Ugh, please stop. Stop it. Yeah. All right. Well, there you go. Steepers, mate. And what's it, mate? Good, it was all right, but uh, it's a little expensive. It is a little expensive oh, for what it is. Oh, it's not big. It is, it's huge, but it's asking a lot for what is actually in the game, which is, right. you know, rinse and repeat courses. Sandbox There's a thousand courses. You know what I mean? You can go literally anywhere, but 60, 60 dollars? It's a little bit too much for that. It's a little uh. bit too much for that. Uh, which is a crying shame. So there you go. There was Steep. If you enjoyed that video, please check out our previous one, which was Killing Floor to Me. What's made? <laughs> You're an idiot. Who gets to be the boss? You're the boss! You're the fucking boss! Alright, boys.